Japanese or Chinese. There is nothing quite like the sound in a school gym to clean your sinuses out and wake you up on a cool spring day. <laughs> We're at Northeastern Clinton Central School Gym today for a very important reason. Not to play a little horse or one on one. Calvin and I, well at least I'm way past that age in my life. But to celebrate a century of excellence. Bev Lamberton, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. How are you, Gordy? I'm just terrific. I got here a little after the routines that you guys did this morning, but I understand you had some fun. Uh, the sixth grade did skits depicting uh, employees' uh, employment at Champlain Telephone Company. They were excellent. Thanks to the faculty and uh, Mr. Mulligan and Northeastern School, it was great. I could see you were beaming when I got here after all of that part of the routine was over, but that will be part of our program this time around. The last time we, well, we've interviewed a, you a number of times for one reason or another, but we did a tour of Champlain Telephone Company. When was that? Was that a couple years ago? A couple years ago you had a tour of Champlain Telephone. That worked out very well. I learned, I don't know very much, so every time I go somewhere I learn something, but that was a very educational tour. Yes, it was. Um, also, thanks to you, you're always at our open house to see what we have each year too and we appreciate that. It's, it's really a lot of fun. How long have you been associated with that organization? Not for a hundred years, so don't give me that baloney. No, it's going to be 35 years this year. Come on. Yes. That's how long I was in the radio business. Are you saying it's time years? for me to retire now? No, I was saying it was time for me to get out of that business and start a new one and I do many different things in my life. As a matter of fact, this very morning I spent time with a bunch of younger elementary school children in uh, Dannemora. It's Careers Week in many of the schools and to, just to think how many different careers I've had in my lifetime and how many different things I could have done for a living and how many things I do now just to make my life interesting and more passionate. So you just chose the Champlain Telephone Company yes, for 35 years. Yes, and I loved every minute of it. You know, it's great to be here, and I noticed that you have a lot of things going on all around this gym today. This took a while to get this whole thing conceived and set up here, didn't it, Bev? We've been uh, meeting with the school now for the last couple months and deciding what events we're going to do. And we started off with kindergarten through third with all the schools, Shazy, Northern Adirondack, St. Mary's, and Northeastern. And you can see in the gym today we have a lot of coloring sheets that was a project that the K through third grades did. Well that's behind Kelvin over here. Yes, we have some over here on this side and also oh, on, both on the, sides. both sides. I knew he was beaming at something across the gym. So we had a lot of participation with those classes. And then the fourth grade class did a short story essay. Oh my. And the fifth grade class are um, they're putting together um, <laughs> you forgot, didn't you? This is, I'm the one that's supposed to forget things. You know what they call those, something that we can't, but it has something to do with the brain anyway. We can't mention that on television, but just when I'm ready to say something, it's like a little bird came through my head and grabbed it by the edge and yanked it right out of my field of view. But anyway, lots of things going on with lots of kids. Now tell me, Bev, what's your position at uh, the telephone company? Now? My position is customer service manager. That makes perfect sense to me. What did you start out doing when you first When began? I first started, I was customer service representative. So uh, I've been in the same department for 35 years. Oh, no kidding. Yes. You're going to keep doing it till you get it right? Is that the idea? That's the idea. Okay. This, so you have how many people from the telephone company actually here today? We have at least 10 today that was on the committee. No kidding. On the technical fair committee. Yeah, but it's a technical fair. So explain what that's all about. Well, we wanted to involve the students in our areas, and we wanted to educate them on what Champlain Telephone Company does. And we have from um, basic telephone technology up to doing DSL in our territory now. Um, we have a mapping process that Steve Southwick is in charge of. We have E911 services here with us today. It, it's truly amazing how much the telephone business and that little telephone company has changed in the last 35 years. I must say, for 100 years, it's been a, a, 
an institution, an, almost an icon here in the Northern Tier. Yes, it has. Uh, we always wanted to play a part of the community, and I think in the past years we've done that. Uh, our customers are our business, and we enjoy them. She knows all the right things to say, huh? Silver-tongued, if I ever heard anything. One of these days we're going to do a stock car show with that son of yours, too, you know. Yes, there's one coming up, so. <laughs> we'll plan that. We planned it a few times before, so we, we know how to do it. Where, do, where would you like to start showing us around today? We'll start with, uh, we have Richard Filion with us today, who's worked with Champlain Telephone Company for many years, and he's brought with him a display of all the telephones throughout the years. I love that idea. Let's do that next. You know, Red Filion, how are you? Good, and you? I'm great. I was talking to some kids in Danamora this morning, telling, her, uh, telling them about different careers and how some of us change careers in our lifetimes. I stood up there and I said, are there any questions? One little girl said, yeah, how old are you anyway? I said, well, does it mean anything if I say that I told you I'm as old as dirt, older than dirt? She said, oh, yeah, you, that's about 100, right? She yeah. said, well, I'm not saying either one of us are that old, but we are standing up here, so you can say something for us making it here today anyway. Well, that's, that's a start. That's yeah. a start. Red, how long, you're retired from the Champlain Telephone Company. Yep. How many years did you work for them? 33. Did you really? Mm -hmm. Bev's got you beat by two already. Oh yeah. She said she'd been there 35 years and that's how long I spent on radio. One of the, I know you had a very interesting career and uh, it's, I should mention before we go any farther that we're, we're talking about an independent telephone company. Oh, yes. That's a little bit different between an independent telephone company and the average bear, right? Yes, there's a lot of difference. Yeah. So you had a good association with them. Oh, what, definitely. What did you do all that time? Oh, I installed, repaired oh, phones. Yeah. Worked in Moors most of the time. Did you in oh, Moors? Yeah. Oh yeah. There's a lot worse places to work, right? Oh, that was a great place to work. It's a it's a great part of the country. I just I was just talking to somebody about Moors this morning and how much we enjoy going up there to do a couple of programs a year. Dragoons. Oh yes. We've been there. We've had a few breakfasts there, you know. <laughs> yeah. With a few lunches. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but listen. You got a collection of telephones. You don't have them all here today. I know oh, that. No, no, no. How no. many? Would you guess? Maybe a thousand or so. Come on. Oh yeah. A thousand telephones? Oh yeah. Where do you keep them all? In my son's bedroom, in the porch, <laughs> in shacks, anywhere I can. In Billy Obrey's garage, you know, all over the place. That's like me and my books and all the stuff I've collected. We're putting a new floor into my house today, and my wife and I were trying to move stuff out of the living room. Why do you keep bringing new stuff home, she says. Sometimes wives understand, and sometimes they don't quite get the reason for us collecting all oh, Well, my wife doesn't. Now it doesn't bother because I just bring them in there and set them, and she doesn't know one from the other. So, I'm... How many do you have hooked up and running in your house? Two. Just two phones? Don't you think that's cool in this day and age? I got spaghetti wires running through my house, through the walls, through the basement. I had, I think, four phones set up in my living room alone. <laughs> I'm trying to disconnect wires last night to get ready for the guys to come and put the floor in. <laughs> I called my wife. It took three rings for her to get to the phone. I called her from my cell phone on the way up here, and she said, it took me a while. I only got one working phone in the house. You know, when I was a kid, you were lucky to have one phone. Oh, yes. Well, sometimes one in the neighborhood. And one in the neighborhood. Yeah. And you'd go next door to make yeah, a phone oh, call. Yes. Or they holler out the back porch in the summertime, Maud, you got a call <laughs> from your kid. Oh, yeah. Let's take a look at some of the phones here. I know you enjoy collecting them. Which is the oldest? This one here is a Montgomery Ward's phone. That's the oldest. That's 1910 to 1920. Well, that's even before my time, but I've got to tell you, when I was a kid, we had a phone exactly like that on the wall of our house over in Messina Center. Mm -hmm. Exactly like it. Yeah. Uh, many of our younger viewers especially would not have any idea how this phone works, so explain no. it to me. Well, you just used to pick up the handset and then crank, you'd ring the operator, and then you'd tell her who you wanted, and she'd tell you most of the time if they were home or not. Or... <laughs> because it was just somebody, generally in your neighborhood, yeah. who happened to have a switchboard in her, in her kitchen, or yeah. her, on her porch, or her living room, and they had plugs that you'd plug into yeah. holes. Yeah. To make a connection, she mm -hmm. actually had to plug it in. Yep. 
Oh, yeah. And she was sometimes called Central. Central. And sometimes she was called Annie or whatever. Right, whatever That's her good. name was. Most of them, they knew them by name. And you could ring different length rings. Yep. One, yeah. two, two shorts, three longs. Oh. Definitely, yep. <laughs> oh, God, does that bring back memories yes, for me. Does. Did your family actually use a phone like that when you no, were a young guy? Our first phone was like this at home, 1953. That 1953 was the, yeah, was the, the first, first phone, phone you had? Yep. That's not your ears ringing, that's a PA system somewhere in the building. Um, this was called a pedestal phone. Candlestick. Candlestick yeah. phone, and that's a, a little bit different from the average bear, but it, it has the same concept as the one from the oh, wall. Yes. Does it date to a back, back to about the same yes. time period? This one here, this setup here came out of Ted Ouellette's father's garage in Morse. Did it really? Yep. Don't you love it? Oh yes, that's part. Now, people would look at this and say, gee, that's made out of plastic. Well. It was probably Bakelite. Yeah. Uh, different, you know, the forerunner for plastic, oh, yeah. but a different material altogether. A lot Pe stronger. Lot people stronger. are used to their little princess phones <laughs> until they reach over here and pick up this handset, which weighs uh, nine or 10 ounces probably. Definitely. <laughs> Isn't that amazing how much the difference just in the weight, right? You could drop those phones and pick them up and reuse them. Of course you could, and many people did, right? Um, and look at the cords. The cords are a little different from oh, today's cords too, right? Right. A lot stronger, you know. Cloth covered, oh, yeah. cloth covered, cloth covered cords, not plastic and not coiled in the same way. And generally, you didn't have a 25-foot cord like you have today. You no. can't walk all around the house, no. right? You were very close to this telephone, and that was somebody's telephone number right there. Oh yes, mm -hmm. eight seven one one. Yep, that came out of Moore's also. Did it really? I think that one there belonged to McCombs yeah. down on Main Street. Well, essentially, this candlestick phone, this is the other part of it, right? Yes, that's the ringer part. With, with the ringer part. Mm -hmm. And so you can see one from the other very, yep. very close in style. Mm -hmm. What do we got next, Red? Well, it's just we go down to then we went into the dial. Oh, wait a minute. What's this one here? Well, this is the same. This, is, this oh, one was hooked to this one. Right oh, here. I see. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Just, you know, difference between. Same concept. Same concept. Then you had dial phones. Yes, and you went into the dial phones, colored. First, they were all black. but now Of course, they were all black. And then if you had a colored one, you were. Really something. You were really something. How long has it been since you actually made a telephone call by dialing? I do all the time at home because that's what I got in my. Come on. Oh, yeah. I got no, a dial no phone. No touchstone? Oh, I have a touchstone, but I got a dial phone in it. I should have known you'd have to have at least one oh, yes. working you gotta have one at dial phone. Yeah. I'm, uh, once again, I'm sure young people have no idea. No, what the, They wouldn't know what to do with that. The kids today are having more fun with these right here, just dialing because they had never seen them. Never seen a dial? Yeah. I had somebody, some young person, call, uh, no, not some young person, some person your age and my age, call me yesterday and say, I had some old tapes that my husband had when he used to sing on the radio. And a friend of mine came over and made a, a little round record out of it. And I said, little round record, what would that be? I said, oh, you mean a CD? She said, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Not, you know, having a clue. No, they, they had no clue at all. And she said when her little grandchildren came in and looked at the old records, which the old 78s, and looked at it, and then they saw an LP, 33 and a third, and the little kid said, grandma, that's the biggest CD I ever saw in my life. So, you know, there's a little generation sure. gap there, Red, you know? So, anyway, you got a white one. That you one got also a wall came out of Yeah, this one John Harrington brought up. This came all the way from Wisconsin. No, Montana. It looks like it hasn't been beat up too no, much. No, it's still brand new. <clears throat> it looks like it's, it's quite a color, brand new it? unless you waxed it. I'm not sure that would fit the color scheme in my kitchen. Remember when I said before about the 25 foot cord? That cord will stretch all the way around the kitchen. Believe me, I know because every time I grab the phone in the kitchen of our house, I have to pace. Can't stand still. You know, I got to twitch or pace. And when I walk around away from the phone, of course, my wife has plants everywhere. Mm -hmm. I'm always knocking the leaves oh, off the plants. Strangle the poor plants or the dog or my wife or somebody. These this one is very familiar. Yeah, those here were up till. Oh, we had those from. Mid 60s and 70s, from the that's another one from the telephone company. I mean, that's that's one that should be from anybody 
Anybody over 30, 35 years old should recognize that kind of phone or at least that color. Yeah, oh yeah. Not the most appealing color in the world, but it was universal. I bet you had them in your house, Calvin, right? I still got my hometown cable phone that was that color. I still kept, really? I kept it. <laughs> and I've got one out in my river room just to keep me humble. But I never use it to dial out, e even though it's a it's a uh, push type. Um, you know, when they just sit there for a long time and you don't use them, the contacts get dirty inside, oh, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they get dusty and stuff, sure. So I, I don't know how to spray them or anything else. Someday I'll take it apart and spray something in there. Yeah, that'll, just... that'll probably burn it up for good. Well, I'll clean it up good for you. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the most patriotic phone I've ever seen, but that's a little more modern than the other one over yeah, there, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. It's same still, idea. A dial, still a dial phone, yeah. Still dial phone, the same idea, the, the pedestal, the candlestick. And let me see, Alf's got one. Yeah, Alf's here. What's that? What kind of a deal is that? That's, well, that's a wall phone? Yeah, or? That's a, well, it just sits there. And you, have, you, know, you can either hang it on the wall. Or... Oh, that's actually hooked to him. Oh, yes. Oh, oh come on. Yep. And then we have the theme phones, as I call them. Yeah, there's novelty phones. Novelty phone. Look at this. I've never seen anything like this. I hope. Look at that. Works good. And we have Alvis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? We got an Elvis phone that dances. I got a music box like that that dances. And then we got another character over uh -huh. here. Oh boy, look at this. I wonder if he swears. You think he does? No one Bart, I'm sure he does. No, he probably does. Look at the this is the most complicated one I've ever seen. Hold all my calls. Don't look at me. It's your phone. Hey, I always wait for the third ring. Hey, man, if you want to be cool, wait for the third ring. This is that unbelievable. Last chance, honey. I'm waiting. Hey, it's for you. That's a, that's amazing. Did you actually buy that, or did somebody give that to no, you? No, I bought that down in Plattsburgh at the bargain here. Did you really? Oh, yeah. It looks brand new. You shined it up. No, that's just the way I got. Have you ever? Up? Oh yeah, sure. It works. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's neat. That's that's my kind of phone. Here's one that should be very familiar to people. This. Actually, an awful lot of people bought these Mickey Mouse phones for their homes. I've mm -hmm. seen lots of them. Some of my kids had them or have them in their homes today. And every now and again, you'll see, you'll go into your favorite store and you'll see one of these theme yep. phones for sale, right? They have them also with the rotary, too. That, that same, oh, they did? Yeah, both of those. Uh, they have rotary and touchstone. Now, we're talking about technology a lot here today, so let's talk about some of this other stuff. Wait a minute, what's the... Well, I've got this hooked up to this key system for the kids can dial back and forth. Oh, really? I don't know which one this one is. Oh, come on. Yeah, and as you know, they talk back and forth. They're enjoying it. It's something. And this is a, Lego. almost like a Lego. It is a Lego phone. That's a, I, I've never seen anything quite like that before. That's kind of neat. Brought that in. Really? Yeah, that works with us. That's wonderful. What do we got? That is a key system right there. Okay. Just, we're just using that to, for they can talk back and forth. Oh, I but see. But that's used in businesses, small businesses and stuff. And you can put up to 10, 12 phones on them. Oh, I see. Yeah, it's, it's a lot different when you get into the Matter commercial fact, aspect. Not to say, well, I helped Joe Southwick put the one in wiry when you were there. Did you really? Yeah, and I got your old key system to home. Dude. And I don't even know when that was. Oh, well, that was back five years ago, maybe five, six years ago. It was longer than that, because I haven't been there since 97. Well, then it was before that. Then. It was before. Well, I, mean, yeah. I haven't been there since 97, and you guys were there yeah. a couple years before that. Well, wow, that's when we changed well, it I over. I it's eight years. Yeah, you were still in the center room. There. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's way different. They have all new studios, and the, oh, lots of things have changed since then. <laughs> but that was amazing. All right. 
What is, what have we got here? This is an operator's position that used to be up at Champlain when we had the 1210 when we had our operators. 1210, what does that mean? That was the switch we had back from 1982 till we just got this new switch. Now, I mentioned before how the operators used to sit in their kitchen in the, in the, you know, the little telephone companies and they had to plug things in a board with holes in it. Yeah. This is the next step after that. This was the next step after that, yes. This would date to what, about what? Well, from, we set, we got these in 82 and we had them till 91, 92, 93, somewhere in there. So you, the operator would have a keyboard. What's, yeah, she had her head, this was her headset. She wore Oh, the little headset, yeah. Around her ear and then sure. she would receive the calls and she would do her thing and dial whatever you wanted. Yeah. And she... Hey. The people in the media and the yeah. television business, mm -hmm. every time we wanted to change networks or move things around, we had a whole, we had a switchboard like that yeah. with the old plug. That's nice. And this is yours? No, no, no. Oh, this that. belongs to the television. Oh, know. I thought maybe you put this in the garage too. Well, you know? if we could find room for it, yes. Ha, 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 ha. Someday... Someday we're going to have to come to your place and you're going to have to show us all the telephone. Be my guest. That sounds, sounds like a plan. Red, thanks for talking with us today. Have yourself a great day and you a great too. life, will you? All righty, thank See you. See you later. Yep. There's a Roy Clark of Hee Haw fame, which plays a mean guitar and mandolin. Then there's the way more famous Roy Clark from the North Country. <laughs> How are you, Roy? Pretty good, pretty good. I, I'm I glad to be with you. I have to say that um, I'm the second in line because my father was a rowing, so is my son. Come on. Yeah, there's so two got, famous ones. Oh, wow. that's That's got him beat. I'm, I'm going to call him up when I get home and tell him, no, we got many more Roy Clarks can, than you. I can tell you stories l later. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe we better not, huh? Yeah, probably not. You know, you've worked with a company for a while, haven't you? I'm in my 31st year. Isn't that, a, everybody's got more than three decades. We were saying as we walked over to this display that the ice storm was one of the worst times of your lives. Calvin said he didn't have to go very far down the road before you guys were there. Wasn't that an awful time? Yep, he found us that Friday pretty quick. Um, yeah, I would say that um, of the guys that were there at the time, when they walked in that Friday morning, uh, they pretty much had tears in their eyes. Uh, we realized about 80% of our plant was on the ground. That's amazing. Yes. I didn't realize myself that it was 80%. Yeah, I, when you think of that, uh, we're celebrating our 100th year, and uh, the growth that we had uh, in those 100 years, 80% uh, of it was on the ground, so it, it was pretty devastating. When they say the ice storm of the century, they're not, they weren't kidding, were they? Yeah, yeah they, no, they weren't kidding. Uh, there was a lot of hours put in. Um, and there was a lot of money spent um, g getting the, uh, the network back up and running. And it took a long time because we had to start at um, Lake Champlain and then kind of work west past Altona. So it, it took a long time. It was a mess. For those people who are viewing this who might have moved here since that infamous ice storm, when did it start? February? January. 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 Yeah, January. January 5th. Started January, 5th. January 5th. Yeah. 1998. And uh, it's, it's a day that will go down in infamy, that's for sure, because anybody who lived through it remembers it as one of the most horrendous things they've ever seen here in the North Country. Well, we had a, we had a bad time right from uh, November of 96, because that's when we had that bad flood. Two, two floods at my house in 96. Yep. One in the spring and one in the fall. Yep, and then, and then we had some, uh, some bad storms um, that worked through in 97, and then 98 hit. January 98 in and, and it was just and it was, it was a bad area anybody that travels this area and just looks up um, at the top of the trees as you get north of uh, Plattsburgh to the Canadian border there is no tops of trees yeah and, and up north of the border it was horrendous I mean we had with giant power towers going down and just things like you might watch on the weather channel that you think would only happen in Louisiana it or gave, somewhere else. It know? gave me a little cringe when I when I looked at North Carolina and South Carolina when they had the ice storm down there this year. Uh, kind of you felt for those it, people. Don't you? Yeah. You think about if it. If you look in the area and you see a whole bunch of green poles standing up, those are all the poles that were replaced during the ice storm. And there's some roads. There's a lot of them. Uh, they all the poles that came up. Most of the poles that came up were the, the pressure treated poles. Yes. And uh, if you look at some roads. They're all green poles, and that's how many poles were down. 
I think one of the most impressive pieces of footage from the ice storm, I don't mean to belabor it except that it was a real big deal here in the North Country, one of the most impressive pieces of footage was where the poles were dropping. Mrs. Ashline, Mrs. Ashline and they were talking on the tape, right, saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. It was horrendous. The sound of the trees cracking around my house and, and everybody else's house was more than you can believe. Yeah, it, uh, we had an incident where we were trying to um, clear Route 11 uh, between, uh, by the Beaumont, between uh, Russell Point and Champlain, and uh, as we pulled one pole out of the road, six more went. Um, so it, we, just, we just gave up and found an alternate route to, uh, the reason we were clearing the road, to get the trucks back to the garage, and we had to find an alternate route to get back to the garage, but yeah, it was... Uh, and, and this mammoth task uh, that Roy's talking about was replicated over and over again with power companies and telephone companies and cable companies. Cable companies. And we have people from Ohio and various other states. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania coming to help us. And there was yeah. a, a lot of friendships during that time. You well, know? We had, uh, we're a member of uh, New York State uh, uh, Independent Telephone Association. And nice to uh, send up, uh, we call for help. And we had. Um, Many, many independent telephone companies uh, come up from downstate, and uh, some of those guys stayed for 30, 45 days. Think about it. And, and uh, it was just a, yeah, a tremendous cooperation uh, in the telephone and in the, in the power department and in cable. Um, uh, the cooperation that, uh, to get everything back up again was really amazing. There was a lot of sharing going on. I remember there was an ice storm down around the Oswego area this winter, and a bunch of our guys went down there, and I said, oh, deja vu. And I looked at it on television, and they had an inch, an inch and a half of ice. And in cases in 98, we had two and three inches of ice on things. Oh, yeah. We had some cables that had six and seven inches Come of ice. On. Yeah. Oh and that, my goodness. And, and that's why the towers collapsed in, and collapsed in Montreal because they said the ice buildup was six to eight inches on the, on the lines. It just not made. That's, it, that's more than weight. most people can understand. All right. Enough of that. We got pictures of it here. We got a lot of great old stuff here. Explain some of the things that we're looking at. Uh, this picture is an, a duplication of the article on here. Um, when Champlain Telephone Company started in 1903, um, I, a lot of people don't understand that there was a Rosses Point Telephone Company, a Champlain Telephone Company, and a Morris Telephone Company. Um, Rosses Point and Champlain merged, and then Champlain Telephone Company and Morris merged. At one time, uh, Morris Telephone Company supplied dial tone across the border towards Hemingford. I did not know that. Yes, and um, I believe it was in the 40s where that stopped happening. I may be wrong on that, on that port, but at one time they did. They supplied dial tone across the border. This is uh, the initial founding of, of the telephone company and, and the, um, the cord boards and um, Paul Conover, if anybody oh, yes. from around here, Paul Conover was our uh, central office uh, engineer boss at, uh, back then. Um, this is when they installed some of the XY switching uh, before we went digital. Um, and this is the original board set up that was over on Pine Street, uh, the original boards. These boards stayed in effect until about 1985, and then these electronic boards came in. And those electronic operator boards um, stayed until about 1994. I think that's eight, similar to the one that we looked at right over here behind us. That that's position number five, which was, I believe, the 911 position that we had. No kidding. Yes, um, that was in the chief operator's office, and uh, yes, where the boardroom is now was the telephone area oh, for the no operator's kidding. room. Yes, these are wonderful photographs, spotlighting some of the different people who have worked there. Right. Um, that one's Mr. Obrey, up in a, in a bucket, Billy Obrey. Oh. He's got uh, 37 years here. No kidding. There, thereabouts. Um, and he, uh, he, we always say he's older than dirt. Uh, <laughs> That's what I said about six times about myself today. Uh, um, and, a lot of, and a lot of this um, is just things that have happened over the, over the course of the years. This float, uh, we, we put in a parade. Um, in the 80s, and that's the old cord board. That's May Fayon sitting at it. Oh. And then we, we actually ran 
um, open wire across the uh, with the cross arms. Did we had a, really? we had a call going across it. Oh, that's yeah. cool. Um, sometimes, if you come into the office and you see people dressed up like for Halloween, uh, that's Anna Tro. Okay, that's Bev. Oh come on, that's Bev. Is it? Yeah. Is a riot? Um, and it's just uh, some of some of the uh, the things that you know that's happened. Uh, Mr. Tro, Jimmy Tro in his younger days, yeah. one of the older trucks, um, and and just a varied amount of uh, of parties and and people that we had. Uh, the for anybody that didn't know, the business office and the telephone office used to be on on Pine Street, yes. corner of Pine and Spruce, and then uh, we bought uh, the convent in uh, around 1980, and that's where we installed uh, the first digital switch in the, in the North Country, which was the, the original 1210. Replaced the XY, the old step-by-step, -step, where you could always tell when the kids came home from school and it got noisy oh, in the offices. My, 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 my. And then in 1998, we switched over to a Siemens EWSD um, electronic switch, and a, a newer, newer version of it, and that's what we're using today. Uh, more features, um, and just Technology just keeps going up. It's nice to have scrapbooks and old photographs, and some of the some of the old pictures are, are wonderful. And the fact that some that's here's one from 1956 when I was only 19 years old, uh, and everybody's name. A lot I, of the old I photographs. Was, I was 10. <laughs> Were you? Yeah, oh, yeah. I was born in 46. So, yeah, some of these some of these albums are, are really good. Um, it's nice that they um, they kept a lot of this. I think it's great. Oh my! And somebody has named all the pictures. You've got to be kidding! Isn't that neat? This came probably from somebody's private collection. You think, Ron? Uh, I think yes, it is. Yes, uh, I think uh, Dicky has a lot of them. I think um, uh, I think you just interviewed Dicky yeah. over there. He has a, a lot of these, and he's kept a real good sca scrap record of the telephone company, uh, as well as a lot of the old phones. Oh, a, uh, his, his records. That's part of the that float again. Yeah, that float again. We had a great time on that one. Oh, that's pretty neat. Well, when you've been around for a hundred years, it's bound to be some kind of a written record, and uh, yeah. a lot of the people who've worked for the company down through the years still live in this area after they retired. You know. Yes, they do. Um, and it's been really funny because there has been a lot of um, relatives work here and a lot of relation. Um, at one point in time, um, uh, my sister Joan just retired and uh, she was here, she was an operator, then she worked in the business office. Um, my wife worked here for 22 years as an operator. Um, Did she really? I yeah, didn't know that. Yeah. And my, and my oldest sister back in the... <laughs> Uh, telling her age in the, in the <laughs> 50s when she was in high school she used to be part-time operator here too Isn't that um, so it, it, it's a background uh, Ricky Dubois works here his father uh, uh, Bill Dubois everybody knows as Joe he worked here for uh, 20 years so 20 21 years so uh, it's been a lot of family orientation here uh, there's a lot of with the with the Southwicks and the Knapps and and the Coffins and then you had so other family members that have been here a long time too. You know, whether they're related or not, it does become one big family. The, the people who work in an independent company like this, they, they get to know each other very, very well in a town this size. The one advantage of working for an independent telephone company, it is very, very family-like. Um, uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's a few independent telephone companies around here, of course, Shazy Westport is, a, is another one. Um, but it is very family oriented and, and you, um, it, the industry is is li a lot like a, a family. You get to know a lot of people because you work with them all the time, even in the different country, uh, companies. Yeah, and it's this is a great area, the northern tier of Clinton County. I've often said I wish we could show this program in metropolitan areas where where people think they've got it good, and then just take a look at the people, the businesses, the relationships that people have, and just fabulous countryside that we have up here and it's a, not a bad place to, it, to have a career like this at Champlain Telephone Company and to raise a family. It's really amazing. Um, I worked uh, the exchange of Rosses Point for about uh, 19 years um, off and on uh, working around and the, the real nice thing about it is I don't know how many times where I would call somebody at work and say you have trouble with your phone 
and they would say, yeah, but you know where the key is. Just go in and, and fix the phone. Isn't that great? And Just well, go in the house and they trust everybody. And, and, the, and the trust, and the trust was. see you do that in some other metropolitan areas today. Yeah. Um, some of that is probably disappearing because uh, it, it's, it's growing, okay? But the, the, uh, the trust of, of the people, you, you could... Especially in this day and age, Roy, you know? So many yeah. things have happened, it's, it's very hard. That trust, that the edges get burnished and worn off the sides of that trust that we used to have. Yeah. We never locked our doors. Our kids would play in the neighborhood, and you'd watch out for my kids, and I'd watch out for your kids. That was, we, there was a little old lady down here who was everybody's grandma, and they'd stop in for cookies. We had a discussion with, uh, with another sort of senior person that was talking to a little while ago. And we had discussions about that. You could go away on vacation for two weeks, come back, and then the next door neighbor would tell you how many, what color car came in the yard and who they were. Yeah, or why, 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 why yeah. you got, yeah. And, and, it, and it was a nice thing because uh, you were never worried about that. Um, and it, and to, to a basic extent, it still exists around here yeah. a lot. It does, and it's wonderful. I, I have talked to Kelvin about this in the past, and, and before it's too late, I want to get together. There are a few of the old time telephone operators like the ones we saw at the switchboards mm -hmm. back in the 40s. But I know a couple of gals, Marge Cluett and a couple of her friends, who were on duty when the Japs bombed Bomb Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And they do have memories from that time period. Can you imagine what the telephones did oh, on yeah. that day? They lit up, especially back then because everything went through the operators. Yeah. Um, there were stories about um, even when my wife was working on the, she started on the cord boards on Pine Street, and there was still people that would call Central, not the operator, yeah, call Central, <clears throat> and I, can you connect me to my sister? And uh, <laughs> just like and that too. My my wife was from Plattsburgh at the time, and she would kind of split her key and look at May, one of the older operators, and say, "Who's her sister?" <laughs> <laughs> and then May would tell her, and she put her through. But there was uh, oh, up until. Um, uh, in, the, in the early 90s, there were still individuals uh, that would call in and, and, could you connect me through? And they would give the name, and, they would, and the operators would connect it through because they wouldn't dial. <laughs> you know, I've, I've seen postcards that were addressed to a person, just to a person, and they got to the right place. The local postmaster would know exactly who what they town they lived in. Yep. And as it is now, they're not supposed to deliver mail unless it has your specific address. And after 911, that got confusing because mm -hmm. many of my family and friends don't know what you know what happened and what the, the num street numbers that changed right. and so on. So I still get an occasional mail to uh, Gordy Little Route 22B. Right. Where, whereas it's a, a box number, box 92 now. Yeah. Anyway, what, what, let's walk down here and talk as we go. I want to try to get some pictures of all the displays. And maybe you can tell me what we're looking at, Roy. This one's the 911 uh, display. Uh, he's, I think he's gone out for lunch, but he'll be back very shortly. That's very nice. Yes. Um, we invited uh, the 911 because we work closely with them uh, and to enhance that even more with the with the old boards that we had when we went to the electronic boards um, we actually had an uh, enhanced uh, 911 locally right here in, in our exchanges because the boards could do that yeah before before it all went to you know having been in the radio and the radio news business for so long i was familiar with this whole operation spent a lot of my career on the radio promoting the mutual aid system that the firemen and emergency personnel have and i've watched all these changes as they happen here's bob gurkowski over here has been retired for a long time who who spent most of his career in the united states air force then became a, a dispatcher, dispatcher as we called him uh, later on in his career and he and i became very very close friends dispatcher one yeah dispatcher one for a long time and jerry silver was number two. number two i think jerry still works. yes yes and a lot of the names of people who work there now uh, have worked there for a long time and they are good friends as they do a good as job. many of our viewers know they're now located on a former Plattsburgh Air Force Base right they even have the name their own street emergency services emergency drive, drive. <laughs> drive yeah Roy knows all these names because he was EMT for many many years oh you were yes I was uh, in the fire department for about 22 years you know, it's hard to find somebody who hasn't served at one time or another in the fire department. Mm -hmm. That's part of what we're talking about way as we stood over there about networking. 
yes. about everybody doing something to help out the community. There are an awful lot of unsung hero, heroes. Very often on commercial television, even on this program, you hear only the people whose names are in the news on a given day. But there are a lot of people like you who did that for a long period of time. Well, you know, when it, it's a big commitment, is what, what I'm trying when to say. When President Bush came out with this, uh, you know, uh, Empower America and, and uh, you go volunteer at America, they should have taken the report from Clinton County. Clinton County is one yeah. of the biggest volunteer areas in, in, in the state. How often have I said that on this program? How, you know, people think Clinton County, Plattsburgh, Podunk, USA, guess yeah. what? We've been on the cutting edge. We Can were we, on the cutting edge way back when, when we developed an evacuation plan yes. back in the civil defense days. Communications, our emergency services has been, I mean, on the yeah. top uh, the whole time. Uh, we went uh, 800 um, in the bandwidth for the radios, the first ones in the area. Uh, 911, E911 countywide, first ones in the area. Uh, the amount of volunteerism in, in, in the media, EMS. Um, and having ALS, advanced life support, and all the, all the crews are available to every area, one of the best in the area, um, it just goes along with the volunteerism in the county. It's, we like to blow our own horn uh, because it's important to let our own people know that we appreciate all their work. All right, let's move to another station. You seem to be the boss of the operation here today, Roy. Well, right everybody, there, everybody bailed out for lunch and left Roy. Uh, so I can hear his stomach growling. As soon as somebody saw the camera, everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why that is. Um, this is a, we had a little contest. Um, it was for developing a futuristic phone. And um, these are some of the... Look at this kid's got a video phone here. Isn't that cool? Yep, the, I'll tell you what, they have some great imaginations out there. That's why this country will always be great. Um, the kids are really doing a good job. This is a fourth grade, fourth grade uh, from the, the four schools are from Shazy, Northeastern, Northern St. Mary's. Um, and the reason that these schools are, are included is that this is our serving area. Um, the Champlain uh, Telephone Company has, uh, has area that uh, serves, the kids are in Shazy School, are in Northern Adirondack because of Altona. And then uh, Northeastern, of course, around here, and Saint, of course, Saint Mary's in, in Champlain. I love it. Look at this cool stuff. Look at this one—the wrist, the wrist phone. Dick Tracy, where are you? When we remember the, it was a wrist radio when I was a little boy. Look at this ancient watch. Holy mackerel! Yeah. Uh, I can remember when they finally, when they really did come out with wrist radios. Now they got wrist computers. Some of these kids are beautiful. Some, this is another table of them. Oh, they're great. I love kids, and I love kids' imagination. Some of them, I, I saw one of the old crank telephones over here, and it looked like he stole his father's fishing reel and took the crank off a fishing reel and yep. put it on the side of the box. See, right <laughs> over here. Isn't that Dad, beautiful? Dad's going to be looking for that Dad's this spring. Say, Wait a minute, I can't cast. Oh, these are beautiful. Look at some of this stuff. And there, there's going to be some prizes given out for the, for the best I ones. i got to look upside down to see what this is. Oh, okay. <laughs> This is terrific. Kids yeah. are beautiful. Some, right? some of the imaginations on there. Teach are really them good. to use their imagination. That's one of my yeah. favorite all-time words since the first time I ever went to Disney World and sang that song, Imagination. This is a uh, project for the eighth grade. Uh, what we did is we took about uh, 35, 40 phones and took them apart, put a schematic inside, and it's going to be a project of three or four of the students per oh, phone boy. to put it back together again. Don't put one on my kitchen table. You're going to have, I used to call them, my wife would say, Gordy, you got some spare parts there. <laughs> well, that's the whole project is that uh, once they get it back together again, we have a, a little key system over there. and They're going to have to plug it in and get dialed to them to make, make a call sure it through works. it. Oh, yeah. Oh boy. So it's going to be a, a challenge to them. There's going to be three or four students per phone. Um, most of these phones were donated by Mr. Feya. It, it, he's got a thousand, so it might be. He probably wouldn't miss seven or eight or ten of them. Didn't make a dent. Didn't even make it. One, I said, how many you got? I thought maybe he'd say 30, 35, yeah. Gordy. No, he said maybe about a thousand. A thousand, I yeah. I said, where do you keep them? And he had to think about whose garage they were in and whose bed Everybody's. they were in. Everybody's. Oh. And the joke, the joke is uh, if we had any junk to throw away, don't throw it away. I'll, I'll take Where's it. Where's Bob Venn when we need him, right? <laughs> Bob Venn was the collector. And I can identify with both of those people because that's the way it is at my house. 
Uh, what, okay. What we have here is a demonstration of video conferencing and new technology. Uh, what we did is we have transceivers which convert. Uh, these units are connected with fiber optic. That's oh, fiber optic cable on. That's the yellow so cable on the floor. These two cameras could be New York City, Atlanta, could be New York City, California, it could be Champlain, Plattsburgh. Um, what we're designating here is that it's being converted to light in those transceivers, transmitted across and reconverted out, and you have video conferencing point to point. It's modern wonderful, technology. and it's, it is modern technology. It's we've been in. We've interviewed people in businesses and been in conference rooms where video conferencing was demonstrated to us. It's used in the classroom all the time. All it's the time. used in the study of uh, various sciences, in, including uh, what young physicians who want to, people who want to be doctors. They can and actual operations. When we went to Alice Hyde Hospital in Malone, you know they you can have the you can have the expert on the screen while you're doing the operation. This is pretty good equipment because it runs at uh, it can either run at like a half a T bandwidth or 768 or it can run full T, 1.5. Uh, we so, have no idea yeah. what the heck you're talking well, about, Roy. It, it, it's, uh, you, you get very little latency on it. You, you, it's, it's almost instantaneous. It's like it watching works, yeah. television. A lot, a lot different from the video phones that they were using Absolutely. over in uh, Baghdad That's because when you see the guys moving like this. It's because of the fiber and, and the equipment. Um, it just, uh, it's really good equipment and it's just getting better and better all the time. Um, the bandwidth, uh, everybody, everybody wants bandwidth now, yeah. um, and that's what this provides. It provides just a uh, wide open bandwidth. So what people are seeing here is a live picture of what's going on right here in this gym. Right? From, from there to there, correct. Yeah. Okay, let's keep walking here. People might wonder what all that sound is in the background. That's the public address system here in the school. There's Kelvin. Hey, there's a fat what, guy in a, That's right, a little, sh little short midget. There's a, what you're seeing, what you're seeing uh, on that screen is actually what's being transmitted from over there. Oh, and I'm looking back there and I see and, Calvin's and, and, camera pointing in that right. direction. Isn't that neat? So it's, you know, like I said, it's instantaneous and, and uh, there is very, very little latency. It's really good. Yeah, fiber optics are amazing. When that, when that first started, that was incredible. Now, speaking of fiber optic, what we're doing here is we have Rick Dubois. I mentioned his father before with the telephone company. This is Rick. He's been with us. You've been with us, what? Just let me get this microphone over here. How you doing, my friend? Hi, hey, good. What's going on here today? Well, we're giving a little demonstration of fiber optic splicing. I, I, a lot of people, I'm sure, who are watching this have heard over and over again fiber optics. They've never seen any. So explain what you got here. Well, this is a fiber optic cable, which can go in the air or it can be buried, which uh, basically has these, in this case, this is 96 fiber, so it's got 12 tubes, these individual tubes. Inside each tube are 12 fibers, which is basically what we got here. Far cry from the old days. Wouldn't they, didn't they talk about transmitting in pairs or something back in the old days? Yeah. It's a little bit different now. You yeah, can put a, more, a lot more conversations on quite a bit in one cable, right? <laughs> yep, that's for sure. All color coded? Very, yes, all color coded with uh, the actual glass it's right here on the very end. It's fiber is, glass, is that what it is or is it? It's a glass fiber. Glass yep. fiber. Yep. Who would ever guess that you could splice? <laughs> that reminds me of the days but nobody here is old enough to remember wire recorders before tape recorders came along. Mm -hmm. And the wire was on a reel. That's what they magnetized to record on. Now we use magnetized tape. Now it's digital, so you don't have to even think about tape. But we used to try to splice the wire once it broke. If you want to right. see these fat fingers, and they were even fat back then, tie that wire in a square knot. That's the only <laughs> way you could splice it. A little bit different. How do you do it here? Well, we use electricity, actually. We send an arc through and melt the, the two glass fibers together, which is what this machine does. Oh, isn't that right. amazing? Yep. Once you strip the cladding off, this color coding, because the glass is all, uh, all the same color, you can't tell one from the other without, oh, I the, see. without the cladding on it. We strip that off and cleave it, which gives it a nice precise cut on the end, hopefully. 
one in each side of the machine. And there's a, these two electrodes in here. We'll actually pass the current through it and fuse it together. And this is, <laughs> if it's going to work, there's the two fibers coming together. This one on the left doesn't look the best. But so it brings it all together. Yep. Now it's got to align it up and down and back to forth. Isn't it amazing? And you can watch it all yeah. on the screen. Yeah. Takes the manual labor out of it, right? Yeah, you definitely couldn't do this by hand. That's incredible. And yet the yeah. inside of that machine and this machine is not totally unlike the old splicers we used to use in the old days yeah. for, for movie film. Yeah. Look one, at this. That one didn't come out too good. Yeah, we got a bubble in there. That's all right. We're not giving out medals <laughs> today. You don't have to sweat that. And there's no test, is there? Yeah. No. no. That one wouldn't pass. Well, that's all right. When they when they are fused together and when they're spliced, yeah. they're together. Um, it's it's pretty tight and it'll still transmit the same way as it would if you hadn't spliced it. Yes, yes. With a fusion splicer, it's uh, very little very little loss. Yeah. The light. Yeah. That's incredible. So this are the kids amazed? I mean, yeah. I'm a kid, so I'm amazed. <laughs> I'm amazed at the process. Do you do this all the time, Rick? Or no, I don't. No, oh. I don't. Only only occasionally. What, what do you do generally? I'm a lineman. I mostly string this stuff up in the air or bury it in the ground, but lately I've been getting into the splicing part of it. How much of the business has gone to fiber optics? Mm, more and more all the time, that's for sure. Yeah. I don't know what percentage you say. I mean, are. I mean you, hear the, you hear everybody talking about fiber optics these days, cable companies, telephone companies. So there's more, more and more fiber optic cable being used than ever before, I'm sure. Our offices were interconnected with fiber probably, we started in 1990, um, probably 93 we had all our major offices interconnect with fiber. Uh, all the remote units that we have, uh, the remote offices are all interconnected with fiber. Um, every major uh, spot with transmission is, is fiber now. Um, we only have copper from the remotes out to the customers, and even then we have fiber to the customers some places. So there's more and more fiber going in the ground. The telephone company was kind of on the cutting edge with fiber optics, as I remember. Here. Yeah, we, we uh, the first. yeah, to have the fiber yeah. backbone of office to office, and uh, like I said, all our remotes are fiber, and uh, with all alternate route. We do a few things right, right, Rick? Occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thanks for talking with us. Have a great day. This is pretty neat stuff. Isn't it amazing how almost everybody took off on us because yeah. it was lunchtime? Yeah. All right. They're gone. Okay. What this is is uh, uh, this is actually some of Steve Southwick's. He's our outside plant engineer. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a CAD system. Um, I'm not quite sure what area this is. I had Champlain up there, but I think this might be a, it a Moore's look, area. It doesn't look like Calvin's Road, that's for sure. No. Um, what, I, you're, what you're seeing on the computer screen down here is what's projected up there. Um, that's right. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly where, where we're looking at. What this does is I can take an area and kind of look, look at... A whole it's like blowing up a satellite image, making it. That's Rouse's point. Looks like. You uh, even recognize that, Calvin? Uh, be my guess, but maybe not. Uh, let's let's see what what it actually is. That looks like uh, a river going through there. I'm wondering if that is the Champlain. And if I can click on this, and then and bring it into play here. Um, we can take a good look at it. Yep, I think this is Kimpex. And I was saying, yep. So this, is, this is the interstate. Yeah. This is Route, Route 11 in the North Way. So, if this is Kimpex and that's Elm Street, and I'm guessing the Champlain Telephone Company would be right about there in the main office, would right on the hill, right there. So we could, we could kind of. Zoom it, zoom it in, and zoom it up. And 
and do that. And I think that's it right there. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. We, uh, they use they use this for the uh, for the fiber routes and for the cable routes and f uh, where all the, the pole lines run. And you can actually put on the map uh, uh, the power runs, the water runs, uh, the gas runs for because gas and electric goes through with the gas lines. We don't want to dig into any of that. Oh, no. um, and you can add counts on this, and it's all property values. Like these are all pieces of property. These sure. are the property lines. So Steve can can map out cable routes and and do well the whole engineering aspect of it. Technology if is amazing, and this is all the software to be able to do it. Used to be all big mapping drawings oh, and by hand. Sure. and a lot of uh, road work. Yeah, a lot of road work. And this kind of sit right in the office and and just bring it we're up. We're talking about technology here today and boy we're getting a liberal education about it. This is this is terrific. Uh, in the last 10 years the uh, technology has been an explosion. Um, if one hasn't kept up with it, you one falls behind. Uh, <laughs> I can see you're getting pretty good with the mouse there, my boy. <laughs> well, uh, if you it, about 80% of my job now is on on a screen if you if you just told me that Five, six years ago, I would have laughed at you. I'm not laughing Probably anymore. I had a heart attack thinking about it, as I did when I got my new job in 1997. I, I worked on a table with a, with a pencil and paper for a year, and they said, okay, we're giving you a computer. I said, trouble. I said, I'm in big trouble now. Yeah. And then now I get on it and just do the job, and if I get a snag, I holler help, and somebody's there to get yeah. me out of trouble. That's that's why we have our uh, IT uh, yeah. department and... Uh, and, uh, and, the, and the people in the, in the support. Um, yeah, we're just more and more and more computer. Uh, our, our main switch is nothing but a big, giant mm. computer. Technology. It's and, amazing today. And, uh, and it's that way. Uh, it's going to be very shortly that all of our installers are going to have laptops in their trucks and everything is to be transmitted electronically. If you think we've got a lot of wires on the floor in the gym in Northeastern Clinton Central School here today, you ought to go to the Champagne Telephone Company and look behind some of this equipment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never saw so much spaghetti in my life as the time we were over there. Well, it, it it's because the, of the jumper wire and everything is, oh, sure. is connected between uh, the blocks. Um, the, well, your first indication is, oh my God, where does it all go? And it's really amazing that over the years you find out where most of it yeah. goes. Isn't that uh, yeah, one way or another. This is DSL. What, this a lot DSL? of people have no idea what that means. They've uh, heard the phrase. Yeah, digital Lime sus uh, subscriber, which is kind of a misnomer, but that's what they, they're calling it. Um, it's an Ethernet connection. Uh, that we supply, um, we um, we transport the our DSL over the regular cable pairs, to um, so we have dial tone and, and the DSL on the same cable pair, uh, and the equipment that we use. Um, we're very f fortunate. Um, we have a very good product. Um, is it a perfect product? Well, there's nothing out there that's a perfect product. Um, but we can supply just about every customer in our company with DSL with the product that we have. Now, explaining uh, just, I didn't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but for the people who are not initiated or don't know much about computers, when you, um, unless you have a dedicated computer telephone line at home for the average person, the old way is to turn your commuter, computer on and that prevents you from getting telephone making and getting telephone calls on your telephone line. DSL changes that. That's what you just said. And I want to explain to people that they can make the telephone calls and go on the computer and do it at a phenomenal speed. Yeah, it's 10 times faster yeah. than, than the regular dial-up. Dial-up, uh, most computers now have what they call 56K modems in there. And most of your connections aren't 56K. They no. call it that. Most of your a good connection is uh, f over 40k. Mine's uh, about. I'm lucky in Morrisville. 40, mine, mine's 45, 48, 40. Occasionally 49 on a good day. Good day. And and that's that's just a bit rate that um, depends on the site. It can slow down like mad. Oh sure. Uh, with the DSL, it gives you speeds. Uh, most of our residential country, uh, customers are uh, at 512, which is half a meg. Listen, uh, that's. That is amazing to me. And In other words, when you push the button, baby, it goes. There. Yeah, and and, it, and of course, this is a, it's all electronic. So the closer to the office, the, fast, the faster it goes. But uh, we can reach out. I've got. Uh, we say I. The, the telephone company has customers um, 
at 27,000 feet, and we're and they're still getting 300k. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, and and the equipment the equipment is designed to to reach out. Now, like I said, is it a is it a perfect item? No, nothing is perfect in this electronic world, um, but it does have the capability of, of getting DSL to to the most amount of customers out there. It's amazing how many people take DSL for granted now, especially people with in businesses, and if it happens to go down on a given day, they're pulling their hair out. Of course, you've I, never been there. I don't know what they <laughs> holler about most, uh, uh, their, their TV or their DSL, okay? Yeah, that's um, funny. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but we get so reliant on technology. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. We had a customer that, um, this stuff is amazing because it'll work over half of, half of the pair, one wire, oh, well. and he was online, and he never knew his telephone was out. We went to the house and said, uh, your telephone's out. He says, I never knew. My DSL, DSL never went down. He you says, know, what, it was a little bit, little bit slower, but he says it never went down. You know, that, it, it, what I said before, and I'll, make, I'll underline my point here, about a week ago in real time as we're taping this in, uh, in uh, late April, in the year 2003, we had a power outage. You know, something happened in the transformer on Route 3 and, you know, we had 2,700 customers or so without power. Now, some people would panic, say, oh my goodness, the furnace is going out, oh my goodness, the sump pump. My wife and I got the kerosene lamps out and set them on the table, got the candles out and set them over here and sat down, clicked on the gas fireplace that doesn't require any electricity and sat there and held hands and smiled for the first time in and saying gee whiz we hope the power doesn't come, come back, back on. For a while. yeah I was disappointed <laughs> when the lights flicked back on yeah so you know it's all in perspective and what you're relying on and yeah we're relying on all that all stuff. electronics and there's a lot of people that work work from home I mean, they have small oh, sure. children and stuff. They do a lot of work from home, and this is where DSL reaches out it's and, really and helps them. In that respect, all yeah. right, let's move along. I guess we got the right guy here when we got Roy Clark, right? He, he's um, telling us what's happening. I've always said I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> yeah, me too. This is just a display of just uh, wireless phones, as far as uh, just hands-free phones. These Boy, all do these look familiar. Yeah. Some of the early handheld bag phones. Bag phones. Bag phones. These have to be hooked to dial tone. Uh, what, what I didn't say over there, that technology has really gone wacko because they have wireless Ethernet connections now. Oh, they do? That, that, that oh, computer yes, on the other do. side yeah. is being controlled by that Ethernet right there. So they have wire, wireless Ethernet. So somebody that has two computers, one for the kids, one for you, you can have DSL in the house, split it through that unit wireless and connection without having to run wires in the house and that's the wave of the future yeah it's going more and more that way and that's what these this is basically just uh, a bunch of uh, hands-free phones and just different styles and stuff there are so many different styles the flip type and the regular type and some with and some you, with speakers if in you don't them like them they, they change oh yeah um, all right this is just uh, kind of a diagram of some safety equipment and some marking equipment and and uh, some of the safety stuff that we have to we have to do. Everything is safety. Um, we try to try to keep our, our guys working as long as we possibly can. Boy, yeah. Talk about early computers, punch we, cards. We used to do all the billing on those. On punch cards. Yeah. You think about it. Yeah. You have to go to college sometimes to learn how to run a punch card machine, and I know a lot of people who chose that as a profession. Thank God that finally went out, and we do the same thing digitally now, don't we? Everything is pulled from the switch. Yeah. I mean, it's just, everything is electronic now. Everything is electronic. And this is just some pictures from the, from the ice storm and, and getting things back up. Um, and I, I believe they're going to have, a, they've been running a video in the, in the auditorium now, a continuous video of, of what everything was like <laughs> during the ice storm in 98. We're talking about careers. We've got a little booklet here called Careers in Telecommunications. And yep. There so it's good to let young youngsters know, school age kids, that there are so many different things they can do. They well, can change careers two or three times uh, in their life. The lifetime. big joke was and you may be looking at one of my replacements here. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't know who the next fat guy will be to take over this microphone, but <laughs> This is uh, an awful lot of fun today, Roy, and we thank you so much for showing us around. He gets the, he ought to get the two or three gold stars <laughs> because everybody left and you can, you have ways to get back at him, won't you? You betcha. <laughs> we'll plan out. Roy Clark, thanks a lot. Thank you.
Just want it known for the record that Steve was very, very busy. We we're going to get him on to wrap it up, and he was just so busy. Besides, he had a Patsy who was willing to do it. Right, Bev? Right, right. <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the library now. Yes. And uh, there are more posters all around us, and these were done by... Seventh graders. And to let, just to let the viewers know who just turned on their television set and wonders what's going on, we're at Northeastern Clinton Central School in late April 2003, the year that the, I was going to say the little independent telephone company celebrated its 100th anniversary, but I think I have to scratch the word little now. Yes, it's we've no grown very we, little. Now we've grown a lot over the 100 years. Uh, it was a two man operation, and now we have at least 40 employees at Champlain Telephone Company. I think it's, it's good that you had this display up here today because. People are celebrating all the different careers here in the North Country. A lot of schools have been celebrating all week. And as I said at the outset of this program, I spoke to kids in Dannemora. I'm going to later speak to some kids in, uh, in Saranac about careers. And telecommunications is a good career. And I'm sure, even though once or twice over those 35 years, you might have had uh, second thoughts about your career with a telephone company. For the most part, it's been a good thing for you. Hasn't it has been a good thing for me. Uh, working with the public, and it was close to home, so it was, it was great for me. It is. It's nice when you can get a job close to home. It sure is. I, where did I read today in a letter to the editor or somewhere I saw or heard that somebody communicates two hours and a half each way to work into a, in a big city somewhere and life as far as I'm concerned life is too short too short to stay on the road it takes me 11 minutes to get to work in the morning and that's just perfect for me. that's about my time frame from Moore's down is it about, well depends 22 miles 11 minutes. Oh boy. New York State Police are going to have an unmarked car parked right next to your house. She's got the, an in with this race car driver. She, oh, she yeah. has someone she drives. Oh boy. Beverly, it's been an awful lot of fun. We haven't, we haven't rehashed a lot of things about the Champlain Telephone Company, but we've got a little slice of its 100 year history. We did see a couple of photographs of you that I'm sure Calvin will magnify a thousand times that were taken. Probably not, not uh, more than a few years ago. Just a few. What was the one with the nuns? Have it on. Was that you? That was me. That was the Halloween uh, costume. What year was that? Do we dare to tell people? It's probably a good 20 years ago. You haven't changed a bit. Thank you. <laughs> and neither have I. I still got a line as good as the next day. <laughs> Beverly, thanks so much for inviting us up here today. Wow. Once again, I got my education. We had a great time, and I hope that our viewers enjoy this program attached this year to the, to the kids who had their little skits earlier in the day. It's a pleasure always to come up here in the northern tier, and we kind of special, we have special favor for people from Moore, so don't ever forget oh, that. Thank you. I appreciate it very much, and so does Champlain Telephone. Thanks again, and tell that kid we want to do the race car story, will you? I certainly will. Thank you. And who knows where we're going to be next time for our little corner.